Good day, fellow flight simmers. Welcome to yet another tutorial on how to fly the Cessna 152 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is the sixth episode, I believe, of the series, and today we'll be talking about making a standard approach in landing. Stay tuned! Right now we are cruising at 2,000 feet inbound for landing at Kilo November Foxtrot Echo or Fentress Airfield in Chesapeake, Virginia. In a few moments we'll commence our landing, but for now, I'd like to give a brief overview of what we're gonna do. This is the basic VFR circuit pattern for most airports. We have the runway right here, and then we have the circuit. This is the departure leg, the crosswind leg, the downwind leg, and the final leg. Each leg is perpendicular or 90 degrees apart from the next, and each leg is about one mile from the runway. We can see one runway, but there are actually two runways, one going here and the other going the opposite direction. The numbers on the edges of the runway indicate their magnetic heading. In this case, it's runway 05, which means it has a compass direction of about 50 degrees clockwise from north. The opposite runway is runway 23, which means it has a compass direction of about 230 degrees clockwise from north. As to which runway to land depends upon where the wind is coming from. In this case, the wind is coming from the east, so we're going to have to land on runway 05. Now we are currently towards the southeast of the airport and we'll be joining the circuit for a right downwind approach on runway 05. From our current position, we're going to have to descend as we enter the right downwind leg somewhere around here. And then we're going to make a left turn, fly 230 degrees along the downwind leg towards this point right here, where we'll make a 90 degree turn for the base leg on a heading of 320 degrees and then fly perpendicular to the runway before making another 90 degree turn for final approach towards runway 05 on a heading of 50 degrees. By the time we reach the downwind leg, we should be at least 1000 feet AGL, about 800 feet AGL on the turn to base, and about 500 feet AGL on the turn to approach. We also want to deploy 10 degrees of flaps here, 20 degrees of flaps here, and 30 degrees of flaps on finals. Final approach speed should be about 55 knots. So now that we are near the airport, what I want to do is commence the descent. I'm going to turn on the landing lights and reduce power to about 2200 RPMs. This way, the aircraft will naturally descend on its own. Always be mindful of your vertical speed. You don't want it to go beyond 500 feet per minute. Not too steep not too shallow, just right. Listen to this. Upon descending, never will I ever force my nose down using the yoke, especially now that we're this close to the ground. What I'm doing with the yoke instead is to keep the wing straight and level. That's it. To control my pitch, I'm gonna use my power and my trims instead. The less power I give, the aircraft's nose points down. The more power I give, aircraft's nose points up plain and simple so the key here is to keep your nose pointed towards the horizon using your trims your wings level using your yoke and your rate of descent using your power that's it you may refer to the previous episode for more of that one right now we are approaching our first waypoint which is the turn towards the right downwind leg the waypoint is supposed to be about a mile from the runway by the way, that is the airport, though we can barely see it from here. And one mile from that is somewhere around here. So it will be a great idea to find a landmark over which we can reference our waypoint. This open field right here can be a good landmark, so I'm gonna make a turn just about now. Now going back to our plate, downwind leg has a heading of 230. So we're going to have to point our aircraft to that direction. Bear in mind that turning and descending at the same time can be very tricky, especially when the wind is kind of strong. Practice. Just keep on practicing. Practice makes perfect. Though nothing can be perfect, but just keep on practicing anyway. Oh, 
Oops. Air pocket. Two, three, zero. A little more. Alright, there we go. Two, three, zero. Wings level and we're nearing 1,000 feet. If you look to the right, we are now parallel to the runway. We're gonna follow the runway and stay here at 1,000 feet until we resume descending once we've passed the runway, all right? What a beautiful day to fly. All right, we are now about to pass the runway and let's resume the descent. First, I'm gonna decrease the power ever so slightly to about 2100 RPMs and lower 10 degrees of flaps. Now, by lowering the flaps, you get that increased lift from your wings, so your aircraft will have a tendency to climb. As soon as you lower your flaps, you have to be prepared to quickly adjust your trims so that your aircraft will stay in place. And also, with flaps, your aircraft will slow down. So you have to keep an eye on your airspeed. A thing about flaps, listen, never deploy or undeploy your flaps when you're on a turn. If you do, you might lose a bit of control, which is not good, especially when you're this close to the ground. So far, we have already passed the entry point and we are now flying parallel to the opposite direction of runway 05 along the downwind leg. Very soon, we'll be making a 90 degree turn to the right for base leg. Now, how do we make a 90 degree turn? Simple, just add 90 to your compass. From 230 degrees, which is our current heading, add 90, and we get 320. Perfect, so we turn to 320. Now, how do we know when to turn? Easy, look back at the runway, and see if it's to your four o'clock position. If it is, then we can make our turn. A thing to note here is, by the time you're turning for the base leg, you should be at about 800 feet AGL. So it's very important to maintain a steady descent of about 200 feet per minute from 1,000 feet here to 800 feet here. But of course, this can vary from situation to situation, and again, Practice makes perfect. All right, three, two, zero degrees, wings level, and we are on the base leg. I'm gonna give 20 degrees of flaps and pull the power a little bit back to 2000 RPM so we can keep lumbering along at 80 or 70 knots. Now for the next waypoint, we'll be turning towards our final leg. From our current heading of 320 degrees, we make another 90 degree turn to the right, which, if you look to the compass, is a heading of exactly 50 degrees, which is also the heading of the runway. So, we turn to a heading of 50 degrees. That's right. Again, by maintaining a steady descent of about 300 feet per minute on the base leg, we can get from 800 feet here to about 500 feet on our turn towards final. Now, when do we make the turn towards final? Look outside to see if the runway is to your 2 o'clock position. If it is, then you can make your turn. Perfect. If you do this right, you should be able to turn to a beautiful approach picture outside the windshield. Look at how straight the runway is pointing towards us. All the patterns and all the methods we just did in the past seven minutes led to this moment. The runway is just there waiting for us to make a smooth landing. For now, lower the rest of the flaps and decrease power to at least 1800 RPMs. Be very mindful of your airspeed, your vertical speed, your altitude, your attitude, your glide slope, and the runway center line. That's a lot of things to worry about at this point, but you can do it. Always keep your nose pointed towards the horizon and control your aircraft's descent using your throttle and your trims. Using the yoke, keep your wings level, but never over control it. Never, I say, never dip your nose with your yoke in case you feel like you're a bit higher. Just take it easy on the yoke. 
be patient with your aircraft's response and also be ahead in terms of anticipation. Be reminded that your approach speed should be at around 55 knots, so it will be wise to have your hand at the throttle at all times. Adjust power whenever necessary and be prepared to give full power for a go around just in case. If you do all of this, guaranteed, your final approach will be the most enjoyable part of this game. Short finals. I'm gonna gradually reduce my power to keep that 55 knots in check. Now both my hands are on the throttle and the yoke. No time to scratch my nose at this point. 200 feet. Keeping it centered. Still keeping wings level and nose to horizon. Alright. 50 feet. Gently pulling up to break the descent. Pulling back power a little bit, gently pulling up some more for a gracious flare, and touchdown, like a ballet dancer on tiptoes. Rudder pedals for center line, gently applying brakes to slow the aircraft down, constantly pulling on my yoke to keep the prop from hitting the ground. 20 knots. And we're down to taxiing speed. I'm gonna keep the throttle at 1100 RPMs for the taxi. Flaps up, and there you go. That's how you land the Cessna 152. I hope you enjoyed this video, and more importantly, I hope I've taught you something. This has been Marty, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.